This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. This week, we're showing Jonathan just a few of the weapons from the beta of the upcoming arena shooter, X Defiant. Oh, this is this is like they know me and they don't want me to be happy. But to be fair, I've seen worse. I've literally seen worse on YouTube recently. You know who you are. Let us know other games or guns you'd like to see Jonathan break down in the comment section below, and if you enjoy this kind of content, let us know by liking the video. Right. Over to Jonathan. So when I asked my director, can we have an M4? Uh, and he says, we have an M4 at home. Uh, this is our M4 at home. It's not far off, is it? Or at least you'd, you'd think not. But uh, the finish is too, too black, really, for a USGI rifle. This is actually a quote unquote British M4A1. And it isn't just to show, a, it's an interesting artifact in its own right um, of the weird chapter in the, in the British firearms industry. But I've, I'm waving it around mainly because of this, this bit of barrel here. So the M4 and the M4A1 have a 14 and a half inch barrel. The barrel in the game appears to be either 16 inches or based on the civilian 16 inch barrel. I think the barrel is too long. The other aspect are the reloads. So I should say the model overall and the texturing and the wear, that all looks great. Lighting, all looks good. Sound, absolutely fine. Case ejection, looks good. It's one of my pet peeves, as you know. But what doesn't look right to me are the reloads. Not the style of reload with two magazines in the hand there to, to swap over. It's the insertion of the magazine itself. So on, on an AR mag, you have the, the cutout there. That's what la that's what this magazine cap latches into, for those of you who, who don't know. Quite a simple mechanism, really. And we see the magazine go in and it stops about there. Or at least that's what I'm seeing. It stops well before the latch would actually engage. Maybe, maybe about here. It's a bit further in than that. So the magazine in the game is not going far enough in to stay in. And if you then presented the rifle to, to start shooting, it would just drop out immediately. Okay, Chris Vector, fascinating firearm with a, an innovative bolt system. Um, we're very keen to get our hands on one. Uh, fingers crossed. The one in the game now, because we because we don't have one, um, I can't really do nerdy comparison. Um, I've seen the, the the gun builder here with myriad versions of butt stocks and uh, handguards, barrel lengths, muzzle devices, sights, the usual story. I think all of that's sort of legit. That you know, if you could get it, you could fit it. The way that the the gun in the game seems fine. It doesn't really differentiate itself particularly from other guns, but I think I think the the recoil mitigation of the of the vector is a little hard to represent unless you have it just have zero recoil. Um, I don't know how it handles in the game. It's consistent. The way the way it's depicted is consistent with reality. Now, when I, I fired one of these 10 years ago, which is quite depressing, the thing that really impressed me about it was the two round burst setting, because they're so fast and the system kicks in so well and the ergonomics of the thing seem to work, factor into that as well. A suppressor as well to help mitigate recoil and add a bit, bit of weight to the muzzle. Two round bursts, bang on target. I'd have liked to have seen that in the footage. I don't know if the game replicates it, but for me, that would be the sort of USP, unique selling point, not universal service pistol, of having this gun in the game. I don't understand the obsession with jury rigged grips and bits of tape and Going back to old Call of Duty games, um, things like wrapping the sling ar in ra around the gun. There's a bit of string. So there's a bit of bungee cord on the back of this, wrapped around through the sling loop. I'm guessing that's meant to be retaining something on the other side, or I don't know. Don't know what that's there for. And then the optional grips, leather wrapped foregrip. Why? What's the point of that? I mean, obviously in this, it, it tweaks your stats slightly, but the tactical grip, which is identical to the normal grip, but with some blue tape on it bewildered by those those options now in fairness to the developers here the p90 unless you cut off this molded in foregrip and try to replace it with something your options are limited so they, they've tried to be faithful to the gun design great recent call of duty games as much as i enjoy them have drifted quite drastically away from the real guns so nice to see them seemingly representing the guns very accurately i can't see any issue, major issues oh yes i can 
but I think it's deliberate. So we seem to have actually cut away one side of the clamshell. You see the seam here, just like the Airsoft version. This is a clamshell design creating the foregrip and they have actually cut away, leaving the screw exposed one side of the grip. So I guess the idea is the idea here that this is a broken old P90 and your grip options are bodges to replace that. I, I may have reacted a little too strongly to, to the concept. If so, that's a somewhat creative way to get around the idea that we need to be able to upgrade the gun by effectively downgrading it to make it really rubbish to hold by missing half its grip. And then different varying and sophistication ways of getting a half grip bodged back on. So, First time in a lot, in possibly forever, that wrapping random stuff around your gun might actually have an in game justification. The Remington M870, we've seen this many times. Lots of sort of tactical upgrades for this one, but also downgrades again. So we've got, we had a broken P90 and now we have a broken. 870 unless that's deliberately cut away so you might possibly cut away a trigger guard to fit in um, thick mitten type gloves classic arctic trigger guard setup i've never seen that done to a shotgun ever and that doesn't look enough of a gap to actually function as a an arctic trigger guard so i think it's meant to just be broken now, that that's a highly improbable way for a for a gun to break we've got a, a contradiction almost of relatively like, pretty modern hardware. I don't know if this is near future or not. I'm guessing it is. And then wear and damage. Like even the M4 was significantly worn and old looking. Uh, one option here, a folding vertical grip attached to a Picatinny rail pump grip makes my brain itch slightly. Don't like that, but that's just an option. You know, give people choice and they will make choice. <laughs> Somewhat uncommon firearm in games is the RPK in either guys, actually, the original RPK or the RPK 74, which is what this is. This is an actual Russian RPK 74. The, the wooden furniture, well, wooden furniture and what should be a polymer pistol grip are damaged. So an, another bit of damage here. Again, I don't know how you would do that damage, but the way it's been done is quite realistic with the sort of fibers of the wood visible. But it's a very unlikely spot, I think, for this weapon to end up getting damaged. And the pistol grip, again, I don't know if, it, if, a, if a polymer pistol grip gets cracked, and these things are very hard to crack, they would tend to just crack and just come off not so much lose a chunk off the back and uh, the attempts to wrap tape around it whilst you would want to do that to prevent any sharp bits especially tiny little glass fibers from the reinforcement getting into the heel of your hand that seems like an inadequate amount of taping i am wondering if the yeah the curvature on the mag is wrong the mag to me looks like a 762 40 round mag whereas you can see from this 5.451 the way to spot curvature, because it, sometimes it's hard to tell with, if you don't have one to compare in the same shot or nearby or handy as we're fortunate to have, is the angle of the floor plate. So if I hold that as it would fit the, the receiver, you can see the floor plate is at that sort of angle. Whereas the floor plate on this steel magazine in front of me is at a much steeper angle, which tells you if your eye can't detect it otherwise, that the curvature is much greater. So it's down as an RPK-74. On the face of it, it isn't. So the big 50, 50 cal rifle is the TAC-50, the Macmillan TAC-50. Handling-wise, can you shoot a bolt-action 50 cal rifle accurately from the shoulder? Broadly, no. I think if you're going to choose a 50 for an FPS that is shootable from the shoulder with A, massive muscles, and B, a lot of practice. Well, actually, it doesn't have to be massive muscles. A lot of it's technique, but you're going to get fatigued very quickly. Then I'd go with the Barrett. Um, Self-loading, evens out the recoil impulse, muzzle brake on the end. Um, version of the TAC-50 we saw there didn't seem to have a brake, although there was definitely one in the in the menu. Anyway, you definitely want, want the muzzle brake on there to even out, to, to 
counteract some of that felt recoil. But because you don't have moving parts, a recoiling barrel and bolt in the, as in the Barrett to, as I say, smooth out the recoil impulse, you're really going to feel it and you're going to get tired and you're going to miss. So much like an LMG, this thing really needs to be fired off the bipod. Next up, good old fashioned AKM. This is squarely in the AKM bracket. I can't see anything glaringly wrong with it. Now the, the missing top cover is irking me. We see this a lot in post-apocalyptic settings. The implication here with all these broken weapons is that times are hard. So of all the conflict zones I, I haven't been to, but I've seen photos and footage from or sent to me, missing top covers aren't really a thing. Like if you're missing the top cover, the thing is probably in such a state that it's basically unusable. I, I'm sure someone some out there has used one without the top cover on it, but it isn't hard if your top cover's dented or damaged to panel beat that sucker back into shape and get it back on your gun. This is relatively straightforward gunsmithing stuff. And it has a huge advantage of not allowing all sorts of crud into your, your weapon and jamming it up. So bigger issue with the missing top cover is that it shows you that the selector is in the wrong place. Pretty certain that that safety and selector lever is at the full up position, which normally would block, uh, seal off from somewhat, from, from dirt and, and liquid and stuff. And then you push it down to the first setting for automatic and all the way to the bottom for semi-automatic. Well, this one is stuck up, so the weapon should not be functioning at all. The other thing about the top cover being missing is that we can see the hammer is in the fired off position. So it's, it's, it's down, the hammer is down against the back of the bolt, against the firing pin. That weapon shouldn't fire. The whole point of, well, not the whole point, but a large point of the bolt carrier is to override the hammer and cock it, ready to then fire when you press the trigger and then the action will cock it again each time. Major part of uh, self-loading or an automatic weapon. And we don't see, although we have the bolt animated nicely coming back and forth, we don't get the hammer animated. At the risk of showing off, two ACRs. Now, uh, this is as many ACRs as we have. I've only picked up both because one's black and one's tan. And the version in the game that I'm seeing here is a mixture of both. If we had a bit more time, I could swap some some parts over and recreate roughly the right gun. Both of ours are set up as 5.56 rifles. The gun in the game is in 6.8. So that's six. That's not 6.8 by 51 or 277 Fury, which is the new high pressure SIG rifle round for the, for the uh, what's ostensibly the new US Army rifle, the M7 or XM7. It's not that, this is older. This is the 6.8 uh, SPC round from a few years back, which is still around. Uh, people are still using it. It's not particularly common. Ballistically, it seems like a good compromise, but realistically, people seem to have either stuck with 5.56 or gone for something more powerful like 7.62 or this new 6.8. So 6.8 just refers to the bullet diameter. I suppose in sort of in universe, if this is a sort of austere environment in which weapons and ammunition are hard to get, then running a rifle in 6.8 seems a bit silly. And if anything, they should be trying to find the 5.56 barrel and bolt so that they can convert their rifle <laughs> to 5.56. Obviously, uh, being a, a modern modular design, originally the Magpul Masada, this thing is designed to have different barrel lengths, different furniture, can be reconfigured. Even our two ACRs, which are, which are almost identical, have two different muzzle devices on them. They're not much different apart from that. But point is you can swap out basically whatever you like, which lends itself very well to this kind of gun gunsmith interface. Oh, this is this is like they know me and they don't want me to be happy there with this butchered Mosin Nagant here. But to be fair, I've seen worse. I've literally seen worse on YouTube. 
recently, you know who you are. <laughs> At least these modifications look somewhat reversible. We do have sling wrapped pointlessly around the weapon syndrome, which I will never understand. More damage, quite well modeled damage again. Uh, there's a loop of sling around the front through the front sling loop that doesn't seem to connect to the random mess of, of sling at the back. I can hear drill instructors and uh, directing staff the world over crying out in agony seeing a sling fitted like that and I've not even served. <laughs> very, very excessive height over bore as well with that um, riser optic thing. And then a massive like 20 power plus scope that's that's parked on top of it. Right, now I don't have that much time behind Mosin's, but um, I don't remember the clip being able to eject itself with that much authority. Um, for, as far as I know, it's a, it's a fairly common system where when the, the clip the pressed all around into the into the magazine, you can push the bolt forward and the clip will be pushed out of the way. Um, some some rifles are designed more specifically to help flick that out with some authority. What they don't generally do is make it eject vertically out of the gun because the physics are against it there. So unless I'm missing something, that seems to be um, incorrect, but broadly correct in terms of how it functions. Another very tired looking gun here. This time it's an MP7. I'm always a little skeptical in when I see MP7s in pop culture settings as to where the heck they found this thing because it's a relatively exotic firearm. Fine, uh, they may be proliferated. Uh, of course, the other aspect is if, we're, if this is set in the United States, then the select fire, the so-called machine gun variants are gonna be uh, non-existent. And because there is no civilian MP7 variant, the same applies there as well. But anyway, they've got hold of one and it looks broadly fine. Major points to, to these guys for not going off piste with the designs. I keep going on about Call of Duty deciding to make their guns different for whatever reason, probably legal, except <laughs> I think this is good evidence that it is not in any way a strict legal requirement to change the design of a firearm because Ubisoft haven't. So that's good. All right, M16A4 appears to be correct, including the three round burst. The three round burst, they seem to have bought the hype of the, the original hype from 1982-ish of the three round burst that you'd be able to keep all those three shots on target because they're happening very rapidly and they're automated. The reality is not that. The reality is that your first bullet will be in the center of the target and the next one in the burst will be up and right and the next one might well be off the target entirely. It isn't actually that ideal. You have to learn to control it just like you have to learn to control automatic. All it does is prevent you from going cyclic and, and emptying the magazine. We're winning. Keep it up. Revenge kill. Okay, guys, those were the guns of X Defiant. Um, let us know what you thought in the comments, as always. Now, I would always mention the, uh, the Royal Armouries, where I'm currently sitting. Uh, up in Leeds, that's one of our museums. We have one on the south coast as well that does artillery. Um, and we're also in the Tower of London. So if you can at all visit us, we welcome you uh, to do that. If not, we do have our own uh, YouTube channel um, featuring yours truly and various social media channels as always. And, you know, do the like and subscribe thing as well. We'll see you again next week.